Hello everybody, this is Alex and I'm very happy to be back here with a game of five uh, from our international meetup of five players in Kristiansand in Norway uh, this summer in 2016. These are five decks, uh, five starter decks and a single, every single one booster box uh, from each uh, expansion there was of Babylon 5 and uh, as this was a draft format each of us got a sealed deck a sealed starter deck and we drafted all those booster boxes so you can imagine how many how many cards we had and how many cards we could use to select for our deck we played with um, first of all we, s we randomly selected the races and uh, this is what we came up with uh, it is uh, Luna for the non-aligned, Jeffrey Sinclair for the Earth, Naroon Lord Reefer for the uh, for Centauri, and Jakar, a four-card uh, play uh, started uh, game with for the Nan. Uh, the guys also gone for Crusade piles. I with my uh, Naroon uh, did not choose to play one because I didn't think it was aiding to my strategy. I played rather f like a very simple and uh, very um, easy deck, uh, but of which I was kind of um, at least um, capable of uh, moving forward and, and uh, going through my conflicts. Um, so, the non-aligned start, uh, they play... Um, what was that? Uh, rapid growth, I think, and go for, for plus one. Um, and they, uh, yeah, they will, they will go further. So next one, um, yeah, I am just saying that I had legacy stuff in my uh, draft, and I could have played a, a, a crusade pile with legacy, but did the with the. Um, uh, techno mages and of course we didn't have enough cards to play a 20 deck of crusade piles 20 a 20 card crusade pile so we kind of uh, stipulated it had to had to be at least seven cards in the crusade pile to work for it to work so yeah um the nun get their card uh, from the crusade pile and everybody actually gets every turn a card from the crusade pile besides me uh, of course um so yeah Martin, uh, well, sorry, Chris uh, with uh, Jeffrey is rotating to build influence. Yeah, that's what he's doing. And, um, okay, Martin with uh, Arifa is uh, getting a crusade card. And what am I doing? I am, I think I will be, yeah, linear, just a very classic start. Yeah, the non-aligned are getting their crusade card and the non are getting managed growth out um very i mean this is excellent because it allows them to go faster through their deck and especially as this is a draft format where you don't have the right cards to be build your constructed deck it's a great chance of uh, going to the cards you really need master support for uh, the non-aligned, also very nice for the start uh, to get your characters um, cheaper in the game. Uh, Jakar is uh, building influence, as I've seen. Yeah, um, and we are just talking about what the managed growth agenda of the non is doing. So yeah, it's a great, great card and. Uh, Simon was very happy to actually got it from uh, within the draft, to be honest. Uh, the non-aligned are getting the disaffected non out. Nice, because this was a kind of a surprise, um, as they are now able to play non-characters um, and an airlock mishap for the non. I mean, great chance of... I was uh, very tricky to actually get this in a draft and I didn't see anybody else play any cards beside the managed growth but that was part of the non-aligned um, regular deck so there is no no surprise there but Airlock Mishap is quite okay I mean Airlock Mishap to be honest we should have placed uh, did anybody else have um, oh I didn't play Lanier I played uh, Minvari Captain that's true uh, so yeah uh, I will speed up the uh, general start play until we get to conflicts um just to wrap up what what is what was happening the non-aligned got uh, the 
non-aligned, uh, the disaffected nun into the inner circle. The earth got Susan out. Uh, I did promote uh, uh, the, the captain and I also got uh, Deron. Uh, to actually get out and this was the first big surprise in the game where around in the third fourth round uh, the uh, the uh, Centauri player Martin got out Sharukin and uh, as a drug uh, ambassador um, as mentioned we also uh, managed to go through the uh, Wheel of Fire expansions, so there are there were possibilities of getting those ambassadors and creating those. And of course, he will be using Secret Masters as Throw Queen is a Psy um, enabled uh, person, a Psy enabled uh, ambassador, and will try to get out uh, and to build conflicts, Psy conflicts, and uh, try to um, get pawn tokens on at least. Uh, half of the non-ambassador characters in game. When he does that and he succeeded, succeeds, uh, he will win if he gets uh, if he's at 15 of influence. So um, he will need still need to uh, get some conflicts out and play them and uh, get 15 influence. Um, but he will also need um, depends. This is a bit of a tricky, and I'm to be honest, I think this is one of the harder. Play, playing agendas, or especially in a five-player game, as you really need, to, there will be a lot of characters, I presume, in the game, and you will need to build and win a lot of conflicts to pawn every single um, one of, uh, of those uh, characters into your bidding. So, a bit of a tricky play, but um, yeah, an easy way out of the out of the win. I mean, if he manages it, um, this could be a good good start. And everybody was kind of shocked that <laughs> did he played a drug. So now we are, yeah, now we are against a great player. If he has some more drug cards, which are very powerful and almost imbalanced, um, it could be a great game. So. Yeah, the nun got out uh, a Marianne Kramer and started to mess up marks. Um, um, the uh, explorer file uh, of the uh, of the non-aligned uh, enabled them to get out uh, um, Max Allison. They also got out Vizak and trying to get out some fleets. So that was nice. And uh, yeah, a lot of lot of stuff was happening also on the Earth uh, side where he got out some really nice characters and some fleets. So um, yeah, so now he's playing the Secret Masters. And he's creating, uh, well, he's using it to build a conflict, to, to declare a conflict. And and he already actually did it twice, I think. And one of them was directed at Marian Kramer, that's why she has the uh, blue token on her. And the other one was directed at uh, my Minbari captain, and that was also successful. So um, those two actually. Uh, managed to to get there and uh, to build that i uh, did uh, get out an agenda it was warriors cancel um i actually was very happy that um, uh, i got to uh, get a get a lot of uh, different um, fleets from the minbari in the draft so this was kind of good for me the non are playing ghost ship on the on the nan yeah if he's successful he may neutralize a character and or a fleet and uh, if he gets he gets plus one if he if he builds up enough um, inf uh, enough support for this conflict. So yeah, and there is um, the conflict from the from uh, from Chris from the Earth player, and it's an alliance. And the only yeah, the only the only other character uh, player which he has attention of one with is the Centauri because he's playing Earth and Earth and Centauri have attention of one at the beginning. So right now we are about 10 influence and if they win, uh, if he wins, uh, both of them will get to approximately two influence each. So it will be much easier for the Centauri drug player to actually win this game if this goes through. So the alliance for all three of us, this is a, this is a, yeah, this is a moment where we all should build together and stop and oppose this conflict. But we'll see how it plays out. So, yeah, um, nothing much is happening. Uh, the Alliance actually uh, 
did not get through as I oh did it let me see we'll, we'll come to that um, the ghost ship did go through that was okay um, I actually oh yeah there was uh, Mr. Minister Durano out <laughs> for the Centauri, but uh, myself and uh, uh, the non-aligned uh, non player actually took him out, so it was fun. Um, and uh, the uh, Alliance actually did not go through. Um, there was another pawn token on Susan, which it didn't go through. Um, and we had another conflict which was played. Uh, it was not really much of, and we, are, we were building slowly our our um, uh, influence. Uh, the uh, uh, drug player was trying to get some pawn tokens in it and stuff like that. There was a trade pack between the uh, Minbari and the non-aligned. Uh, now it's a uh, limited strike against the uh, against the uh, uh, Centauri. And there are more conflicts in the game. There is uh, our own people first for the for the humans, and I do have a diplomatic intrusion, and I'm targeting the secret masters, of course. It's blank till the end of the turn, so he cannot use it, and every five. Uh, of support, winning support uh, will prolong this effect for another round. So this is a great chance for us to actually uh, stop this a bit and and get this get this over with. <laughs> the Sigrid Masters shall not shall not win this game. So yeah, Marion Kramer is uh, lowering uh, the uh, uh, the uh, tensions between uh, Narn and uh, I think Narn and Centauri. Uh, the non line are getting their non. Uh, non lined captain out. And I'm getting out Dulan because this is a diplomacy conflict and I need some stronger diplomacy characters. So yeah, that's that's what is happening. <laughs> and as I and as Marion Kramer did already turn and as oh yeah. The limited strike actually gets negated by the Centauri playing uh, Dying People. It's a great card actually when the, either the Centauri or the Nan uh, kind of get their usual cheese strategy that is military for the Nan and intrigue for the Centauri. Uh, it's a great card to actually include in a game if you are playing against one of those. Um, so... Yeah, the Earth player promotes uh, promotes uh, a character. I'm sorry, I can't really see which one it is. I maybe maybe it is even a neutral character from the Crusade pile. I'm not sure. The um, non-player is playing a deep space fleet out. Actually, he managed to get a more fleet. And I, I had a I had a feeling that I have a military deck. But to be honest, I had to actually change my strategy and play other conflicts because I was not getting any real nice uh, nice fleets out of my deck. The non-aligned uh, non captain is uh, rotated and uh, his leadership is uh, minus one and he's uh, the uh, player is getting one of the fleets from the discard pile into his hand, which is a nice cool event uh, effect, to be honest. I am I am supporting with Alud Narun. I already replaced Alit uh, after Dylan uh, after Narun was uh, was uh, injured last term, I think. Yeah, and it was really, really nice. I mean, this was a nice chance of, of getting the Secret Masters dumped and uh, blocked for several rounds. Yeah. So... I mean, right now, the game is already in the mid-section. Um, okay, Lady the Gear. And this is a great chance because um, 
I mean, especially with Team Merv, um, is a great in uh, in a Lord Reefer deck because he's already a Lord and he she gets I think four influence, uh, four uh, four diplomacy more if if the if the ambassador is a Lord. So so yeah. Um, Jeffrey Sinclair rotates and is supporting the uh, our own people first conflict uh, to make somebody else. Um, a Nightwatch character. Yeah, the yeah the uh, non-player is really heavy on military. He really really got nice fleets from the start. And the uh, <laughs> the Drazi fleet is entering the field for the non-aligned player. A nice nice thing. Yeah, with a strife mark. My opening hand was actually quite classic. I had the captain to be well, because I felt I had a. Uh, I had um, mm, a military tag, which I didn't play at all. Um, I had uh, my agenda, which was... Uh, oh yeah, Nacho Guevara is rotated. And he's searching for an event which increases some abilities. So this is nice. A good, good, nice character with a nice uh, possibility, with a nice uh, skill. Uh, so my opening hand this on um, this tournament was actually just um, a Warriors Council as agenda, uh, Mimbari Captain as some small cheap character which I can promote easily and build up uh, to 10 with, and um, Minbar as a homeworld, which actually helped me quite a lot during the game and actually allowed me to... Uh, okay, Blue Nar is uh, rotating for the and supporting the diplomatic intrusion conflict, which is great because we can get uh, the secret masters blocked for another turn if we get more than more than 10, more than 5 and more than 10 and more than 15. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Chris is still searching for this for this event. Maybe he doesn't have any, but I think he does. So uh, yeah. And Martin is waiting on. Oh yeah, he found something. What does it do? Okay. Target a military conflict. Okay, he gets plus two leadership if something. So this is great. The Centauri player reacts with um, Doomed Expedition. <laughs> it's a great card. He got it certainly from the draft and did not. I didn't see it, so otherwise I would have taken it. Uh, this is great because uh, a card which was searched suddenly goes from your hands to the discard pile, so there's no chance of doing anything else. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. We're now talking, Trond was actually talking about whether Babylon 5, how much influence does Babylon 5 have? Uh, and as there was already a limited strike before, I think it was against the um, non-line player, um, there there was one, uh, Babylon 5 lost one influence already, so it was at four at this uh, this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're talking about when the uh, effects of a uh, of a conflict actually occur, especially tensions, and they occur generally at resolution. So if you are playing some conflicts and they alter tensions, those change at like resolution. Oh, the disaffected Narnis rotate in to support diplomatic intrusion, which I played the conflict. Great for all of us who are not playing drug, <laughs> so who are not centauri. <laughs> This will block the Centauri player for a couple of rounds. But to be honest, he did have three pawns already. He had Max Allison, he had my Centauri captain. He tried to get Susan, but it, it wasn't successful. And he has uh, Marion Kramer. To be honest, uh, the non-faction is actually full. Uh, mine has plus one character, so he would, he would need another conflict. Oh, in another round. Okay. This is Shining the Night for myself. And it's okay. The um, Earth player has 13 influence, and and I'm trying to um, yeah. 
I'm uh, targeting Minbari players, so he loses one influence and I'm the only one who actually can start conflict next turn. Yeah, work of the, work of the weekend, a uh, drag conflict for the Centauri player. I mean, it doesn't really change much, he just gets some Chaos tokens, so that's, I suppose, okay. And, um, and there's a trade pact with the Nan. Interesting. So yeah, they have both two um, tension of two, so this is a possible possible choice for both of them. So yeah. We speed up again, and in this game, the shine of the shine in the nine actually gone through um, the. Uh, Dulan at my place and uh, some some nice elite uh, things which happened to me gone gone nice. Wick of the Wicked also succeeded, but trade pack did not go through. So um, I think it was blocked by somebody or it got kind of sidetracked. Yeah, Lord Kiro is in the game. Uh, this could be tricky because he can be used to find the eye in in the tag though. We are just thinking of, we are just discussing that <laughs> in the game, that it is quite, it would be very, very lucky if actually Martin could lie during the, during the uh, draft. And this is a crazy shit going on because Interstellar Alliance <gasps> and the non-aligned player declined to actually get into the ESA, which is a big deal because um, I mean, every single player me or becomes a member to the ESA, uh, ISA, um, gets plus one on on influence, and um, every member, every every uh, single uh, mm, player who does not become uh, an ISA member uh, needs to win by plus two for each of member, each of of those who are become who became members. So. Um, uh, we are reading this card very, uh, very carefully aloud because nobody really played this a lot. I mean, ISA is so randomly and so, so um, seldomly played in my game group that I actually played it once, I think. So this was kind of a one in a lifetime event, and of course it was, uh, are you against the drag or not? So. So, so Earth actually proposed the ISA, the Minbari joined myself, and the Nan are now discussing whether, whether they want to join or not, because they didn't prepare a sideboard for this, I mean, nobody did. But uh, we did uh, create some time to actually go through and, and get, some, get, some, get some ISA cards if you wanted one. So, um, yeah, Interstellar Alliance got created, the drug play is now kind of, um, yeah, problematic to, to win for him, or easier for, to win for us. I mean, it's great, because the non-player actually, Simon also got in, so each of us got plus three influence for one per member, and uh, we all of us had like 16 or 15 influence after this one. Uh, that means that it would have been much easier for us to win, to win through a, an agenda which would give us just, you know, five or, or four influence during due to a bonus bonus um, yeah so yeah the first big thing was the uh, in the game was the alliance between the uh, earth and uh, between earth and uh, and Centauri which gone through um, and now it was uh, the earth kind of stabbing back the drug player in the in the back and uh, and creating an ISA uh, alliance but it's it's kind of fun, I think, to to see this happen and to see this this game actually develop as a as a real serious episode or the whole series at all. Yeah, a good question by Trond, the non-aligned player. He was asking whether if someone, for example, creates uh, uh, gets in uh, becomes a member of the ISA and then suddenly changes into a drug faction, uh, whether they stay or not a part of the ISA. So, yeah, ponder that one. 
Yeah, and we, we thought that yes, it would be would be possible actually to be an ISA member, ISA member, and at the same time be a drug player. If it yeah, just to be a drug player doesn't get you expelled. You really need to have to be expelled by using that card, for example, as a member of the ISA. So yeah. yeah. So that was a big, big thing: the ISA getting created and easing on several chances of winning this game, you know. So yeah, um, boost it with three influence. We got into more more games. Uh, there was a war conflict against the uh, against the Centauri by the Narn because they got into war. And as as you can see, they also pulled out <laughs> they also pulled out a Vorlon Mark and Ulkesh. So it was crazy. <sighs> And we are slowly getting to a, to a finale. Uh, there are conflicts being declared. There's our own people first conflict uh, from the agenda of the Earth player. Yeah, and every single one of us is playing a conflict. Attacking pawns on all cash. Okay, he wants to get the leader away. There is a non-player playing the war, a war conflict on the Centauri player. Yeah, and we have. Uh, it's still. It's still the uh, the the Centauri player, a Centauri slash drug player, to declare his conflict and myself. I actually. Have 16 influence at this point in time, at this point in game, and they have again word of work of the wicked. So uh, yeah, more more chaos tokens uh, for them and myself. Very flexible conflict for the drunk player. Yeah. Our own people first on on Kulan, I think, and a board raid, and it has to be. I cannot use it on any of the ISA members, so it has to be either Centauri or Nonaline. And Nonaline have a lot of fleets out, so I'm choosing Centauri because they have none. So yeah, the Centauri now being uh, target of two conflicts, uh, two military conflicts, one border raid and one war conflict from the non and the um, non-aligned player being um, non-aligned player uh, attacking uh, some pawns of the of the of the non player so another fleet for the non-aligned the drowsy sandhawk Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Oh yeah, we are now talking about like this the drug player actually <laughs> rotating uh <laughs> my Eastern Bori captain for free for free because he was uh, he's pawned. But uh his agenda is still blanked, so we cannot do it. Uh the secret masters. So yeah, uh yeah, he's building a. He's creating a colonial fleet to get uh, at least some defense, and the Narn player is using um, a managed growth to get get one card. Major Liana Kammer is being sponsored by the Earth, and um, yeah, we are now discussing whether it is possible actually to use a home world uh, to to get through her into a conflict, uh, but it's actually not because. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It would yeah. Non home worlds cannot be used as home worlds has uh, have a have a uh, term stating that they can only be used in conflicts which target their location, this location. So yeah. No, yeah. So this is, um, yeah, we're still building up some, some, some 
effects. I am, uh, yeah, rotating my expeditionary fleet to get into the uh, border raid against the Centauri. Yeah, I support my conflict. Yeah, with eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the non-player is thinking about getting Ulkesh into one of his fleets as a leader, but yeah. But what is what is what the thing is is that attacking pawns, the conflict from the non-aligned player, he's the first to go from the initiative. It will probably discard if if attacking pawns goes through, it will discard Ulkesh and thus actually. Yeah, does actually uh, negate this effect. So he's using, um, I think, Kodath to actually, um, or, yeah, I think it's Kodath to actually get into a, into a fleet. Or Janep. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Janep. Yeah. So, yeah. Jeffrey Finkler is rotating to support the Nightwatch conflict. I mean, it gives the, um, right now, uh, the green tokens on the Earth cards signa uh, symbolize that those characters are part of the Nightwatch. And um, for every single of the Nightwatch characters, actually, he gets plus one influence to use as an additional influence every turn. I am, um, yeah, uh, I am rotating support fleet and adding it to my expeditionary fleet uh, to, to boost it, just to be sure that nothing happens to it. And yeah, the Centauri player should have been should have gone, and he didn't. So he may actually. Yeah. Yeah. So Max Allison is rotating, and um, he is supporting for four. He's supporting the conflict. Uh, they are taking pawn conflicts. The center employer uses colonial fleet to oppose. He first uh, says he opposes my conflict, then but then suddenly he changes his mind, and I'm okay uh, with this. And he's opposing the war conflict, so he doesn't really, so he doesn't really uh, lose any influence there. Yeah. And at the same time, also the uh, non-player doesn't get a influence from from that conflict. So yeah. And he yeah he does use Ulkesh Kosh to actually get into a fleet, and he knows that Ulkesh will probably not survive, so he will use his fleet to attack the colonial fleet and to get rid of it. So yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, right now I am at 16 plus. Yeah, we're now discussing about the allergic uh, nature of warlords and and uh, and shadows. So it means that as a warlord or a faction with a warlord mark, you cannot or warlord card, you cannot really use or play or do anything with a card which provides, uses, requires or whatever um, shadow marks. Uh, yeah, I sped up a bit because nobody was, <laughs> nothing was happening during that time. And uh, we're now thinking of what to do. And I'm playing Trade Windfall for seven. I mean, in Premiere, at the first printing of this game, this card cost you one singular influence to play. I mean, this was already crazy. Now it costs seven and it's still quite good because it gets you um, another um, another influence um, if, you, if you're part of a trade pack. And I have one with the non-aligned player. So yeah, plus one. I have now at 18 influence. And it's only three influence less. If I win board rate and uh, rotate Minba, I get plus two, so it means I still need one more to actually get get through this, to get to 20. I think I'm the only one who is uh, so close to, to victory. And nobody really watches, nobody really notices. So, yeah. 
Oh, a first battle fleet from the Centauri. This is a really nasty one, actually. He can, he can do some damage to me. I mean, not really damage. I mean, also damage, but he could op he could oppose it, oppose my conflict for the raid, and I really need to win it by five or more to get to plus one influence. So yeah, there was an attack by the by the utility fleet led by the Kosh. Uh, Ulkesh character against the colonial one and the colonial is discarded or is neutralized and uh, yeah and Martin is very happy because with Kulan he could get any discarded fleet with uh, with a cost of four or less so yeah the non-aligned player is using Vizak yeah he Points puts uh, one point of damage on any on some non-neutralized character, and he yeah, supports his attacking pawns conflict. Yeah, with um, yeah, and the um, Centauri player used his especially the colonial, the, the weaker colonial fleet. Yeah, and he uses using the. First battle fleet to oppose my conflict, of course. And I currently have, I think, 8 plus 2, 10 for me and 7 against, so I only win it by 3 and still 2 more to get through. But luckily I have I have the Iran still on the table, so a leader. But he has actually Kiro on the on the table, which is a 4. So I'm I am actually at, at the risk here of losing my conflict. Yeah, Jakar is getting on to one of the fleets. Yeah, cool. The strike fleet, I suppose. Um, he just wants to, I don't know if what the idea is, because the war conflict was already... I mean, that's the problem with war strategy, because it's so uneconomic. Um, even, yeah, and I am playing Moral Quandary on Lord Kiro because I know he really needs to get rotated. This is, there is a no chance of actually him getting into the fleet and messing up my conflict. So, yeah, and that's the only character with leadership in his faction. So it's kind of a good thing for me. So, yeah, now I should be winning the, the, uh, Border rate. So yeah, I still have Alid Nirun. I still have Durlan out. I still have Diron, and I really need will need to actually, you know, rotate it to to get get some stuff. I am recounting my available influence. It's I think it's at eight or nine, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, I have 16 influence, <laughs> guys. Nice for you to notice. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now they are trying to, you know, figure out how to beat me and try to <laughs> speak on in Norwegian to mess up with me. So yeah. And uh, second battle fleet. Is <laughs> rotating to in the war conflict, but the war conflict doesn't really help him much, even because it was already contested. And doesn't matter whether the colonial fleet actually got out or not, but it was contested, and by that he will not get any influence from it. Yeah, I am putting Diran on my fleet, and that's plus two, so it's I think uh, now twelfth against seven. So yeah. Which is by f I'm winning by five. That that's that's cool. So uh, he's rotating 4L to get some chaos tokens. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have any cards to purchase the chaos tokens or to manage the chaos tokens with. So it's kind of a yeah. I mean that that's the problem. If we only draft from one booster box of Crusade or Wheel of Fire, you will not get enough cards to actually build your drag deck. 
unless you, you know, have some really huge luck in getting the cards you really wanted to. Okay, I am uh, rotating in Bari Captain and switching to a Rising Power. Yeah, and this actually agenda will get me plus one power, which I win need to win. So um, it's suddenly, yeah, it's from 16 to 20 in one turn. One from board rate, one through Minbar, one from the ready uh, diplomacy characters, and one from the trade windfall I had. So four influence in this turn, and I should be should be ready, should be fine. Yeah, and everybody blames Isa. I play also the ISA. The Interstellar Alliance helped me a lot in this game to actually get those plus three influence just to be you know part of the ISA and and uh, be able to actually get to 20 very fast, faster than usual. Yeah. So right now they're discussing whether and how to actually beat me or slow me down. There are not many options. They could mess up the agenda with something, but there are mostly conflicts which are, you know, kind of, uh, you know, tweaking with the agenda or blanking it. Um, he, they could actually try to do something with the characters if somebody has, um, has a, you know, um, a card which rotates a character on, or does a damage to a character or something, or maybe damage to Diron or the fleet, just to be able to, to you know, not to win uh, the board raid. This could happen, and this could allow me to actually lose more influence than, I mean, not gain as much influence this turn as, as I would need to for winning. Um, yeah. And they are now they are discussing whether it will be possible to somehow participate in the conflict, but uh, they would be needing. Uh, we can't allow that, and that would be the card which which uh, would enable them to actually break the restrictions. On and he's uh, he's getting his Sharkali uh, <laughs> rotated and supporting his conflict. Um, I mean, right now he knows he cannot do anything and. He doesn't have cards to do anything with it, and everybody else is looking through their cards, but they cannot. I, I think they will not be able to find it. Yeah, the agenda, unreasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, they're now they are even cooperating now with the drug player just to get <laughs> me dethroned. So. Um, Overall, this was a nice game, to be honest. Uh, it was a very... I'm not really happy with my start because I had a really slow deck and I didn't really get... As you can see, I still have like, I don't know how many, 50 cards maybe in my deck or something. It's crazy how many cards I still have. And um, I did not have enough time to actually tweak my deck to the point where I was happy with it to start with. I think I had just had too many cards in it. But it's a draft, so you don't really have the time to, you know, you have a stipulated, I don't know, one hour or half an hour to get uh, uh, to get your deck ready. And uh, I mean, this was kind of a hushed situation. I think I was the last one to get my deck ready. So um, I was very failing the pressure to get those, those things out. And I was actually having a, I thought I was playing a military deck, but suddenly I didn't have as many ships out <laughs> and had more like uh, nice diplomacy characters and they allowed me to play some I mean to, to go through some uh, basic uh, diplomacy uh, uh, conflicts and I used Minbar to get my uh, additional influence so yeah that was a good good uh, chance of doing it so Martin is saying, uh, no, Chris is saying that it's uh, it's kind of surprising that you won. Uh, in well, because we just a couple of minutes ago we we're talking about oh, should we get pizzas or not? And this is going to take like two hours more or whatever. And then suddenly in uh, yeah, in 20 minutes it's over, and or oh, 15 minutes it's over. And uh, yeah, to be honest, uh, the drug player actually got a great chance of winning because he had actually three pieces of the puzzle aftermaths 
in there in his uh, and he also got the eye in the draft which would give him like plus two influence and he now was at 12 so just he just needed to win one more conflict with an influence could got easily more those two more and be at 15 and then well, the only problem was that there were only quite a lot of characters on the table and I mean, just to look at the non-aligned player, he got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 characters out. So he would need another 4 rounds to get actually 4 pawn tokens. There were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 characters in the, in the Earth section. I mean, Earth... Uh, a uh, uh, player's faction. So, I mean, this would have taken a bit more time than just, uh, you know, than just four rounds for him. He would need at least like six or something. So, yeah. Yeah, and they are still discussing how to stop stop my stop me from winning. <laughs> and it's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. We can allow, uh, Wani would be also a possibility, we are not impressed, which uh, it is an enhancement and that enhancement actually uh, hinders you from using boosts from, uh, power boosts from agendas, so this would be another possibility. Moral Quandary would have been a chance to actually get one of my characters rotated, but yeah. The game ended, as Martin proclaims, and yeah. We are getting our stuff together. I uh, was happy to actually win and uh, we'll see each other again soon, hopefully. See ya. Maybe again in Norway. <laughs>